Hey there, and welcome to the third and possibly final edition of Mr. Lau Vlogs and the ICT GCSE Jingles. In this final edition, what I want to cover is um, email and internet safety, as it's one of those key topics um, which we kind of feel we all know about because we use email every day, but actually there's a lot to learn for the final exam, so I'm going to cover some key things there in the final jingle. And also I want to go over the January 2012 paper, um, which some of you will have done, um, and really cover some key learning points so that you're well prepared for your June paper as well. So without further ado, here's the ICGC jingle number three. So, what can I teach you about email and safety? First as a setup, IMAP 4 or POP 3. IMAP sends emails to many devices, your computers, laptops, mobiles and tablets. If deleted on one, you can still read it on others, but storage is limited by online servers. Pop through or download emails straight to your computer. If you delete a message, you'll lose it forever. If you lose a device where POP3 emails are stored, there is no recovering them. That's a major flaw. A couple of advantages are that POP3 is faster. It also uses your hard drive, so more storage than IMAP4. For. for staying safe, keep your password secure. More than eight characters, use symbols, letters and numbers. Don't use personal data and change it regularly. Passwords like QWERTY are guessed easily. Despite all this, you may still get spam, so block these senders and also report them. Phishing is yet another email threat. People pretending to be Facebook, Visa or RBS. They'll have all the logos but a generic address or direct you to a website, so check for HTTPS. By pretending to be an official online company, some take the bait and are reeled into a false sense of security. So now you understand why it's called phishing. It's time to move on to credit card skimming. Credit card skimmers can be attached to an ATM and handheld skimmers are also prevalent. They read your card numbers or magnetic strips, but your CCV number will protect you from skims. Also take care when shopping online. When entering your details, check who stood behind. Maybe use a third party payment system instead. Sites like PayPal are easy to get registered. Enter your details, you may be asked to verify them. After that, there'll be no need to enter card details ever again. So that was a jingle about email and internet safety. I hope you learned something new. There's a lot of key terms in there, such as um, IMAP4 and POP3. Um, the difference between skimming and phishing is quite key as well as they're two different things and often we get confused because they're two things that you kind of do by a lake I guess and they have nothing to do with the water at all. Um, it's one of those weird um, ice tea terms, someone having a laugh. Um, moving on though, I want to cover the January 2012 paper. So if you haven't actually completed the January 2012 paper yet, which looks like this, then it might be a good idea to look away now so that it doesn't ruin the surprise for you. Okay, so first of all I'm going to go back to these um, six mark questions and you remember that when we looked at six mark questions we talked about always giving detailed points using PEE, give a point, um, an example and also um, to explain your example, why it's relevant as well. And understand that if they ask for what is the effect or what are the impacts of something, then you always have to give a balanced view of positives and negatives. If they ask for the impact on customers and say businesses, you also have to give a balance between customers and businesses as well. Otherwise, you'll be limiting yourself to mark and two, which you don't want to do. Moving on to wireless, which is a topic which the examiners love. Um, they talk a lot about um, poor signal quality and what might disrupt a wireless signal. This has come up frequently. 
So in this case, there are only three points which you need to remember. They are firstly, firstly, interference, and that might be from other connections. Um, the second one is distance. So if you're really far away from the receiver, it might um, cause a disruption in the signal quality. Oh, sorry, a disruption or a weakening of the signal quality. And third, and finally, physical barriers. That's where, for example, there might be, say, a pillar or um, a large item in the way, which might happen as well. Um, my next piece of advice is uh, looking through the exam mark scheme. There's one thing which examiners dislike with a passion, and that is where they ask for a reason for something being um, an advantage, and candidates simply put quicker or easier. They never accept those two words on their own. So always explain why something is quicker. Is it because you can do something online so you don't need to leave the house? Is it um, easier because you don't need to print your ticket out so you get it on your mobile phone through an MMS uh, message and a barcode? So always explain that. Um, also take your time to read all the questions carefully. Look at what they're asking for. Um, and lastly, there are another couple of topics which you should look up as well. The first topic is RSS, is explained really well on a YouTube video called RSS in plain English. So I'm just going to say look that up um, on YouTube. And the other one is IP filtering, which is quite a difficult topic to understand. Essentially, every single computer that's connected to the internet has an IP address, just like your house has a real address. Every computer has an IP address. This is how um, the police might be able to track someone down if they've committed a crime online um, because the activity will all be linked to an IP address, which is um, a list of numbers, an example of which it might look something like this. Essentially, your address online. Now, the IP address can be really useful. One way which it can be used is um, in something called IP filtering or IP blocking. And this came up in the January 2012 paper when it asked about programs which can only be viewed in a certain region. So say, for example, you click on YouTube, you expect to see a music video, and all of a sudden it says, unfortunately, this video cannot be viewed in your geographical region. Well, how do they know what region you're in? How do they know that you're not in the United States um, where this video was made? Well, they know because of your IP address. So that gives away your exact location. So those are a few key things that we've picked out from the January 2012 paper. So I hope that's helpful towards, you, towards um, your revision and towards your exam. Um, as this is the third vlog and possibly the last as um, the exam is coming up very, very soon. Um, I just want to wish you all the best in your ICT exam and in all your other exams as well. Um, do prepare well. Um, do the past paper questions. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below. Um, and I guess I'll see you around.